All right, so this is my new way of blogging. How, the, how do I do this here? Very professional. Oh, fantastic. What do you see there? Oh, for God's sakes. <laughs> uh, very, very professional. I got this basket here. What do you see? Uh, can you see me all right? The string is here. <laughs> I need a crew. Will somebody give me a crew, please? Now, here's the deal. I was watching a show last night. My fabulous 40th wedding. Not wedding. My fabulous 40th birthday, whatever it is. And it was about two gay guys on the show last night. And I was thinking. Well, I used to watch the Rat Pack watch. I listened to Rat Pack, whatever it is. In the 60s, I grew up in the 70s, 60s, whatever it was. At that time, they would make fun of, I would say, homosexuals. Because they weren't called gay people that make fun. They were funny. It was fun. It, I don't know why, it just was. I never knew Paul Lynn was gay. I, I saw him, met him in, in California. I was working, I was living in California. I was working at the Carl's, I think, supermarket. I didn't know, it was him, but I never knew he was gay. Not that I care, but I never knew he was, I loved him. I never knew he was gay. And I was friends with uh, Jerry Vale's kid, and Jerry Vale, and in the show, Jerry Vale's show, he'd make fun of Paul Lynn. But at that time, in the 60s, the, the, the comedians, the actors, whatever it was, the pack, they made fun of, make fun. It was a jokey thing, because it was, I guess, hidden or whatever. I mean, the, the biggest stars that we didn't know, um, Roddy McDowell and um, Rock Hudson, we found out later, were gay, homosexuals. That doesn't want to call gay. But I guess they were hidden with gay people since the, the days of the Romans, I think. I watch movies, I read books, you hear about but who cares? But, and Caligula, I think, but there was homosexuality. But, but for some reason, at that time, it was a hidden thing. You couldn't say anything, whatever it was. And... I remember my parents, in the 60s, they would tell me they would go to this, the Globe, I think, in Atlantic City, where they had guys dressed up as girls. It was a novelty or something to see. And there was a guy named Kerry April when I was in, working in the Catskills. And the, 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 the MC, Bernie Miller, would say, we don't know if it's AC, DC, or the other thing. Because it was a... I, I don't I, I, I'd say hidden, but... A, a novelty, whatever you want to... A novelty. It was a, Whatever it was, it was... It, Whatever the words are, funny, uh, quirky, uh, to, to be gay or to be homosexual, or, or I mean, uh, Milton Berle would dress up in dresses, that was funny. It, it was funny, I don't know why it was funny. And then I did, uh, when I worked in the Catskills, part of the act was, we were going to do a scene from Greece because it was, Greece came out in 1978, and the girl that was supposed to be in this scene with David Jack, my uh, comedy partner, was, uh, I had to make sure to tell you it was a comedy partner, not a real partner, because I'm talking about gay people. Uh, my, my partner, like Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis, uh, we said we should, got sick, which was true when we first did it. We, uh, we, we staged this um, Grease scene, where the girl was going to play Sandy Dombrowski, and David Jack, I think, was going to play the Danny Zuko role, and then the girl actually got sick. So I said, I'll play the role, and it was funny. So I put on a wig and a dress and balloons, and... Um, and it was, and we kept it in. We kept the whole shtick. Jesus Christ! You got the whole the dogs pulling the light here. <laughs> we kept the whole shtick in. It was funny. All right. So will you get the hell out of here. Hold on a second. Go. Oh, Jesus Christ! Very professional blog here. Anyway, the hell am I saying? Jesus, I look fat. Um, but I, and and the Rat Pack CDs I listen to. I hear Frank. Um, they make fun of homosexuals, but in a in a nice funny way. Oh. Uh, uh, I remember, uh, I remember my uncle Herman one time said, "Put your hand on your hip and put your hand like that." Now you're a fang. That's that's what he would say to me. But he got married, I think, in the '30s. And in the '30s, this is the way it was. So it, that was his era. And what the hell am I trying to say? The records that I was listening to, uh, 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 Sammy Davis Jr. says uh, he has so many handicaps. He's a a black, one-eyed. That's all he needs to be. Is a uh, be a black, one-eyed, Jewish fagula. That's what he says. Fagula is Yiddish for gay or homosexual at that time. Because at that time, I don't know, it was funny to be gay. or For the straight people. For the straight people. Probably not for the gay people. but for Because the, they were hidden. They couldn't uh, tell you that they were gay. It wasn't acceptable or whatever you want to call it. So in the records that I hear, they make fun of homosexuals. But in a fun, light way. Because it, 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 I don't know why. It's just funny for whatever reason. Not in a derogatory way, but... Funny, uh, I don't know why it was funny. It's, all right. I'm watching the show last night. This uh, 40, my 40th birthday or something like that. Nothing was on, at least nothing that interests me lately. Even though there's 125, 500 channels, there's nothing that interests me last night. If there were girls with big boobs, that would interest me. That's about, I couldn't find that on TV last night. So, and then it was the in-laws. So, um, I'm not going to hollow that. So, uh, so I, I like the Slice, the Showcase, whatever it's called, all the... The housewife shows that I love. I can't get enough of the housewife. It reminds me of Andrea's friends up in Thornhill with Mary in Toronto. 
So they have different episodes of this 40th the birthday, whatever it was. This, this episode happened to be gay people, two gay guys, whatever it was. I was watching it, and I was thinking, like, I'm doing this blog now. I can't believe that. I can't believe it. I'll say that word. I can't believe it. What I'm seeing now it is so, it is so uh, not progressive. Progressive is a this is vegetable soup in a can. Uh, it's so uh, out in the open, whatever you call that, to have times have changed or whatever you want to say, that when I listen to Sammy Davis in 1966, The Sands, when he's making jokes of homosexuals or whatever he said, that's all he needs to be, the Jewish black fagel or whatever it was, and, and everyone's laughing, ah, and now I'm seeing a show of, of two gay guys, one guy, gay guy's going to have a birthday, and he broke up with his lover, he said he got married uh, 12 years ago, it was one of the first marriages in, uh, in California, and now they broke up, they've been broken up for six weeks, and I think the parents are Jewish because his name is Fisher, and the father said something like Lahayim, and they accepted his, the son to be gay, whatever it was, and, the, and he doesn't know if he's going to see his, his husband or wife or partner, whatever you call it. And uh, they're going to have this big party. And they must have money because his partner took him to a clothing store and they bought $3,000 shoes. And he's so excited about the outfit and the dresses. Not dresses, the outfit, whatever he's dressing him up as. I was watching the show. And just, I need something to clear my head. So when I go to the casino, I look at the slot machine. I push the button, push the button to clear my head. As Pharrell said, that Howard Stern was talking to Pharrell. And Howard Stern said, you know, when I'm in the shower, my mind is clear. I'm so creative. And Pharrell said, because you're not distracted with all the other bullshit that goes on around you. So when you're in the shower, you, you think your mind is clear. So I look at a slot machine. It clears my head. When I play craps, it's actually work. But a slot machine, a video, I just push the button, push the button. I look at the screen. And my mind's clear and it's be creative. And when I was watching the show last night, which I didn't care about, this 40th birthday, whatever it is, on Slice Channel, whatever it was, and my mind's clear, just wandering, so it wanders, I watch TV, so I saw this gay show, gay show, I had two gay guys, I'm thinking, look at this, how, how, it's so out in the open, and these two gay guys are so flamboyantly gay, like, um, uh, Rip Taylor, who I love, and the one guy's upset that the boyfriend might not be there, and I thought, this... Look how, this would never, how could, ever, how could this be on? Because years ago, my best friend Ronnie, it's easy for me to say, my best friend Ronnie was gay when I grew up. And I didn't care, I, I care, gay, whatever. He, as my parents would say, Ronnie's a true blue friend. And he was, well, thank God he is, he's still around, hopefully. I haven't spoken to him in a hundred years. That's how good of friends we were. But uh, he was my uh, best friend in uh, uh, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth, and, and through high school, he was my best friend. And when I was 16, he took a cake to my drama class. What straight guy is going to give me a cake in my drama class, my birthday, my 16th birthday? He baked a cake and he took it to my uh, drama class in, in high school. It was, it was a great, great, he is a great guy. I haven't spoken to him, but that's how good of a guy he is. I, that's a good a guy I have. What kind of friend am I that I haven't spoken to him in, in 100 years? But uh, he wasn't true. But who, who cared if he was gay? I, I never thought like that. I, not because I'm so open-minded and I'm so liberal. I'm none of those things. I don't know what the hell they mean. I, I know what they mean, but I don't think like that. I just think. <laughs> I, I, I kind of think. But I, I just do what I do. You know, I, I don't think. I'm not a, a conservative liberal. I, I just uh, I just want money. <laughs> That's all I want in Las Vegas and fun and, and, and show business. and Just the fun things I like. That's all I think about. I don't think about anything else. I don't think other bullshit. Now, I know that lady that wouldn't give that license to those gay people that want to get married. She must think about this stuff. <laughs> I don't know her name, that the crazy lady, they, she wouldn't give the light. No, God says she can't have the license to get married. I don't know. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, in fact, I don't know what the hell I'm trying I was watching a gay show last night. That's what I'm trying to say. It wasn't a gay. It was a show about birthday parties. The two guys happened to be gay. They were flamboyantly gay, which I find very entertaining. I don't know why. I just do. Rip Taylor type, over the top, gay, gay. I like that. I, I find it funny, entertaining. What do you want from me? And... I thought, is, I thought, is it what, in this relationship, isn't one guy the husband, one guy is the wife, do they call each other husbands? So usually I think in a relationship, one guy is more masculine, I'll say, as the husband, one guy is more as the wife. Uh, like uh, with um, Alan DeGeneres, isn't it one, isn't, what, 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 what do you think I know? That's what I thought, so, uh, so I'm ignorant, I'm like Steve Goldberg, so I'm ignorant, what do you want from me? Um, but I didn't watch the whole thing. I was falling asleep. I went to bed at 10.30. I don't know what the hell happened at this party, but it was so exciting. Oh, then he had auditions. The, the gay guy, the 40-year-old gay guy, maybe that's a movie, 40-year-old gay guy, uh, had auditions for waiters. And he asked the waiters, he had to have an audition for waiters, and he asked them to take off their tops. Take off your shirt. Take off your shirt. I had to see them take off their shirt. 
So I said, Andrea, Andrea, I want to have a party Saturday night. I want to have auditions for waitresses. And I, can I ask the waitresses to take off their shirts? Is that the new way of auditioning, uh, waiting people? Waitresses, waiters, bartenders, you get to take off their shirts? If it is, I'm having a party Saturday night. <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. Now I find out. I, I didn't know you could do that. You could ask waiters and waitresses to take off. No, I don't, I don't care about the waiters. I always care about the waitresses. <laughs> but um, the point what I'm trying to say is, what is he doing now? What are you doing? The point that I'm trying to say is, I was watching, I just had the show on. It just happened to be about two gay guys. Every week it's another, it's like people are having parties. How they, and this party costs 3000 for the shoes and 10000 for the band and the lights. And then he hired some um, event planner. And he was so nervous. When the event, he's not ready yet, the event planner. The event planner, he said, don't worry about it. Then the event planner says, well, the party's tonight. We're a little behind schedule. In fact, we're a lot behind schedule. And I'm thinking, why should he be behind schedule? He's paying you. He's the best event planner in California and Hollywood with Katy Perry, the biggest stars. Why should he be behind schedule? You pay him. He should be on schedule. What makes you behind schedule? I mean, and now Jared's working in some movie thing for The Martian. That uh, Who's in The Martian? The movie? I, I, I can't think. And, and th things were working. Pro I, I said, why do you like this? He said, that's, that's the way it is. I know that's the way it is. Which is another blog that I'll do. But I just wanted to say, I was watching the, the gay show last night. Two gay guys as gay friends. And I thought, this is unbelievable. When would you ever see? Yeah, I know Glee is the gay characters. And you see more gay characters. I saw an ad yesterday in the department store. Two gay guys hugging for clothes. I thought, when would you? Look how, when would you ever? Look how different the world has changed. Because it used to be so hidden. And now it's so out in the open, and the outcasts are the people that are unaccepted of that. In other words, years ago, the gay people had to be in the closet, as they say. And one time I went to a gay bar with my friend Ronnie, talking about a gay bar, to see what it was like. And a guy came over to me and said, hey, uh, hey, big boy, you want to have some fun? You want to play uh, uh, a game? I said, what kind of game? He said, well, we'll, we'll play hide and seek. And if I find you, or if you find me... I don't know how to tell a joke. So I went to a gay bar. <laughs> I went to a gay bar years ago. My friend Ronnie. I went to see what it was like. A guy comes over to me and says, Hey, why don't we play a game? I said, What kind of game? He said, Why don't we play hide and seek? And if you find me, we can go out on a date. I said, What if I don't find you? He said, I'll be hiding in the closet. Now, here's what I want. I don't know what that. What I'm trying to say is, I was watching a show last night. It was about two gay guys. Well, when would I ever see this? This is so out in the open. Look how things have changed. And it's great that he loves the guy, and it's about love. And great, who cares? What the hell do I care? It's great that he loves him. He's adored him, gay, gay straight. Where you love the dogs and animals. And everybody lo love, 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 like the Beatles. Love with all those love songs. Jarvis listened to a song today. Uh, silly love songs, which I put in a movie for my friend Sue Epstein and uh, Kim. I made it when I was in college, or when I made the movie. But, but what I'm trying to say is, it was all they, they love each other. So who cares? I, I was thinking. He loves the, the, the husband. He adores the husband. He was crying about the husband. It's all about love. Who can love? Whatever you love. Uh, you, like this dog I can't stand. <laughs> Get me a dog that I can love. What I was saying, I was thinking, yes, I'm watching. I was watching. The, it's all out in the open. And I was thinking about the Rat Pack and how they were making fun of gays, how it was hidden, and how they couldn't be out in the open like I'm watching now. And I thought this is great that, that, that people... You don't have to be hidden. You could love, and, and his parents are accepted, accepted, because I hear about a lot of stories that kids are gay and uh, like the transgender guy. What's Bruce? I was gonna say Bruce Willis. Hopefully, I'm watching this. Bruce Jenner, and people don't accept it, and and <coughs> uh, very, <laughs> and um, people and the kids uh, they kill themselves. They're on the internet. And there's gay bashing. It's horrible. It, it, it's it's just not right. It's not nice. It's not right. It's not. It's, uh, this is not right and nice. It's it's. And I, not because I'm so open. It has nothing to do with that. It's just, every, I'm a hedonist. I live for pleasure. I live for pleasure and fun. And this is not pleasurable and fun for me right now. So I, I thought it's great that it's, it's um, I would never, that, that they, could, they, they could be put shows on and they could be out in the open and they could be accepted. And the parent, I was happy that, it, I don't know who the guy is, but I was happy to see that the parents are accepted of him. And, and that's very nice. And you could be, oh, you, you don't live in the, Nazi Germany, you don't live in a dictatorship, Korea, you can be whoever you want, do whatever you want. And I thought it's, it's great because everybody should do it and be whatever they want to be and have fun and enjoy their lives and, and be whatever you want. You shouldn't have to, you, you, know what I, you know what, even I don't know what the hell I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say was I was watching the gay show and I was thinking of the Rat Pack. 
And I was thinking how times have changed from the Rat Pack making fun that now the, the, the world has changed. I'm, I'm reading a book yesterday, and I'm not, I'll get the hell out of here with this idiot dog. It's called The Greatest Star, talking about vaudeville performers and Broadway stuff. I was reading before I go to bed at night. And it talks about minstrel shows. And it talks about how Al Jolson, a guy named Burt Wheeler, and the <coughs> racism that was going on then, that he was a black performer, Burt Williams, I think. Maybe, you think I know who I'm talking about, I'm reading about? And he was such a great performer, he was a black performer, yet the audience would applaud and stand up after the show. They, they wouldn't stand next to him. They wouldn't get in an elevator with him. They wouldn't sit in a restaurant with him. They'd walk across the street because he was black. Yet on the stage, they're applauding and standing up. They can't get enough of him. And same thing with Sammy Davis and same thing with um, uh, Louis Armstrong and same thing with Nat King Cole. They could perform on the stage. They couldn't go through the casino. Look, uh, nothing makes any sense. So the fact that the way things have changed now, they said, back then, it was offensive to talk about sexual stuff in the 20s, the 30s. It, offensive, but you can make fun of stereotypes. You can make fun of black people, Irish, Italian, Jewish, Fanny Bryce would put on a Yiddish accent. You could do that because that was acceptable to make fun because all, all the immigrants came over to the United States. So all the immigrants came over, so she would talk in a Yiddish accent and make fun of stereotypes. That was normal. That was acceptable, and sexuality was not acceptable. And now, in this day and age, sexuality is acceptable. Making fun of stereotypes is not acceptable. So it said how, how things have gone around, and just like the show I was watching last night, taking this back around to the gay show, how years ago it wasn't acceptable to be gay out in the open. It was People make fun of you. And now it's acceptable that the people who don't accept it, like the lady that won't give the licensing for the gay, she's the outcast. And now all the gays, they have parades and bullshit, whatever. And now, So it's... I'm watching TV shows like that, I thought, look how things have changed. And that was the whole purpose of this blog. Look how... The world has changed. I gotta change the dog. Look how the world has changed. I, I, I'm not for the better, for the worse, whatever, whatever. I mean, it has to be better. You, can only, you have the internet. How much worse gonna be? <laughs> I'm doing blogs. It has to get better. I'm for the better, of course. The technology, everything else is better. So I gotta get the hell out of here. Now, this is what I want you to do. This is some blog. I want you to call the SPCA. That's what I want you to do. I want you to call the Go to, go to Dave's TV Empire at, Roger, at Rogers.com. My company produces television infomercials. We're looking for the next big TV hot deal, ShamWow, Slap Chop. We're looking for the next digital star. We'll bankroll you online and on TV. So get in touch with me. That's the one goal. Billion dollars in TV products and digital stars online. Right about two digital stars now and they have books out, digital stars. Dave's, Dave's TV Empire at Rogers.com because I gotta get the hell out of it. Boy, this camera makes me look fat. It's true. The lens makes you look fat. Dave's TV Empire at Rogers.com. Get in touch with me because I gotta get the hell out of here. I can't stay here. I gotta get out. I can't take it anymore. Dave's TV Empire at Rogers.com. Get in touch with me now. Let's go.